Hi guys, we're going to be looking at a project today that I think is highly appropriate given the very hot weather we're currently experiencing in Europe, and that is building our own DIY wind simulator. I've always looked at wind simulation with great interest. Does it add another level of immersion or is it just a gimmick? We'll be discovering that today using the help of our trusty tool, SimHub. I've got some high powered industrial fans here, along with some other bits and bobs to make this all work. So let's go and have a look at those parts, shall we? So we don't need a great number of parts to build a wind simulator. We obviously need a pair of fans to do the left and right channel. And then we need some way of directing that airflow as well as mounting those fans. We then need an Arduino or something similar to deal with the pulse width modulation to enable us to speed up and slow down those fans. Then of course we'll need a trusty power supply. I'm using a Woolwart which gives us a 24 volt 1 amp power supply. We have two 24 volt Noxua Industrial 3000 RPM 140 millimeter fans. They're pretty big. I have some fan extension cables and I'm using these so I don't have to modify the fan headers in any way. I can just plug the fans into this into our circuit. So if we want to pop out fans we can. The whole assembly is going to be connected to an Arduino Uno. A Micro Pro might have been a better fit for this project but I don't have any on hand so we're going to be using an Uno which will at least allow us two channels but if we wanted a third channel we would have to look elsewhere. The last part I'm using is actually a series of 3D prints. These I sourced from Thingiverse and I paid someone to print them for me. There are printing services on eBay or Etsy to print things from places like Thingiverse. So have a look at those and see what you can come up with. Most are charging eight to 10 pounds for a print. But of course you can print these yourself if you have a 3D printer. Failing that, I've linked in the description some alternatives that you can use to do something like this without a 3D printer at all. Now, without an air straightener, you're probably going to get a diminishing return on your airflow, but you will still be able to build and follow this project. To help my unsteady hands, we're going to be using a perma proto board. In this heat, I'm very unsteady. So I want something that makes it a little simpler to build up, and of course, for you guys to follow. For assembly, let's start by cutting off the male ends of the fan extensions we have. We'll be soldering these to our breadboard, and it means we don't have to hardwire our fans to the control box, as I explained before. Next up, we have to split and separate the wires that we have, tin the ends, and then solder onto our breadboard. Now, pay special attention to the ground, EWM, and power wires, and connect them appropriately. The wires I'm using here, the power and ground are clearly marked, and the PWM is the opposite end to the ground. The tack wire we're not using at all, so I'm just cutting it back to get it out of the way. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. We solder in our PWM and power connectors, then using the block connector supplied with our wall warts, we connect that to our circuit too wires into our Arduino and power supply. I've color coordinated these so life is a little bit easier when identifying which goes where. The headers on the Uno are a pain. I would have preferred a headerless model that I could solder directly to but this is what we have today so I'm using these patch cables into the headers. Soldering is probably a better call. Don't worry if you've missed anything up to this point. I'll be sure to diagram this whole process up so you don't have to follow it via the video. With our circuits all together, we can set about assembling our fan mounts. The Noctua does not fit very well into the fan mount I've printed here. So I have to get rid of the anti-vibration panels that come in the corner of these fans. We have to line up the fan. We have to pay special attention to the airflow direction markers and then slot in the air straightener once we've got this all lined up. Screws I'm using for this assembly are 40mm M4s. They're a tight fit but they should work well. Make sure I get the nut square into the screw hole. 
I use a spare screw, put the nut onto that, drop it into the back of the unit and then unscrew it. That way the nut is nice and square and then I can screw the front in. I'm not going to lie, this is a little fiddly and time consuming, but it's worth the effort. Once the unit is assembled, we can attach the fan to the 8020 mounts. These take M5 bolts with a length of about 30 millimeters. I don't have any 13 millimeter on hand, so I'm using 40 here, and they do protrude a bit, but it's not a big deal. The unit looks pretty good once it's fully assembled. They take quite a bit of tightening, a scary amount in fact, and it does feel like you're going to break the 3D print, but it does fit eventually. And I think it's the weight of the fans here, but I do notice a bit of sagging on the GoPro mounts when you've got it side mounted like I have. I think you wouldn't notice that so much if you had it top mounted. The last thing I did was to paint the left plug on the fan connector so that I knew which is supposed to be the left unit. For me, that was pin 10, but it'll depend on how you've arranged your fans in your final assembly. We have our assembly all together. Let's unpop the Arduino section of this, move it onto our test bed, plug in some spare fans I have, and start installing our firmware. In SimHub, pop over to the Arduino section and open up the setup tool. Remember, don't have any Arduinos plugged in that you don't want to override because you might accidentally select them, and that would be a bad thing. I'm reloading my project here because I made a mistake on the initial installation, but you'll want to start from scratch. Give your project a nice name, select your board type and the serial port for your device, then scroll down to Shake It PWM Fans Outputs. I mistakenly initially selected the Shake It PWM Outputs, not the fan outputs, and this will give you a terrible end result where your fans just switch on automatically and off automatically, but you get no variation in between. Add in your two fans, the software should automatically pick out your correct pins for your Arduino. If you're using an Uno, this will be pins 9 and 10. I leave the other items on default, but make sure the relay pin is disabled on both. Once you are happy, install it on your Arduino and you should be good to go. The fans may periodically spin up during installation, but that's normal. When installed, head on over to Shake It Wind. For me, I was using channels 1 and 2 here because this is my test bench. But when I have it plugged into my main rig, I have other motors installed. And so my channels change. And make sure you're aware of that if you're moving from one rig to another or you're installing it on your main rig to do this work. Make sure to select both your left and right fans and then go back to the wind profile screen. Enable the wind profile and then enable idle wind. I use idle wind for both testing to make sure my fans are spinning up correctly and I also use it in the main rig to help keep me cool. One bonus of using idle wind is that you can now gauge where your fins start to spin up from. For me with the Noctuas, that's 25 to 26%. You can then adjust this in your Arduino sketch if you wish, so you've got the full range of motion from 0 to 100%, but I've skipped this for now, and I'm just making sure that my effects kick in from 25% up to 100%. Gives me a little bit less range of motion here, but it's not a huge deal breaker. You can adjust things like fan curving and drafting effects to your preference, you probably want to do that when you're actually in your rig so you get an idea of what it's like when you're driving with them. But for now, we're good to jump into our rig and see how it goes. I decided I wanted to test this out in a single seater to see how it goes. It was hard to show the effects on the screen so I've attached a little bit of paper onto the top of the fans so you can see better how they are responding to my various actions. In terms of keeping me cool whilst racing in VR, these fans do a fantastic job. They do make a lot of noise, but I'm okay with that. And in VR, actually, I can't hear it. Just everyone else that complains. I start to miss the effect of the fans when parked up, 
and that's when I get a little bit of heat soak. But I guess that's a bit like in a real racing environment when you've got all this hot hardware around you and you're eager to just get out on track and feel the breeze. I ended up having to turn up the turning forces to feel them properly, but it definitely does add a level of immersion along with the feeling of speed down the straights. I've not yet been able to test drafting because I was on my lonesome during this test, but I'm hoping to do that later on. Without a doubt though, having the wind simulator in the rig is quite a big bonus in terms of immersion and in keeping cool. You definitely get that heightened sense of being in a fast moving car. Pardon the pun, but this is a cool little project then that allows you to race on in the summer heat. It certainly helped me with my very hot cupboard. And I've also gained a level of immersion along the way. It's not going to be making much of a difference to your actual driving, but the sense of speed is very real with those fans blowing on your face during straights. So something like the Base Shaker project is definitely going to be something of preference to you if you're looking to help with your consistency and getting extra feedback from the car. But for an immersion experience, the fan simulation is pretty damn good. Fans I use in this project, they're 24 volt, they're not your standard PC 12 volt. You can use 12 volts with these fans and they will work fine, but I wanted to get their full range of motion. As I've mentioned before, these fans are not quiet, and if you wanted to run them quiet, you might want to pick other fans instead. They're also not the cheapest fans on the market. One thing I did notice using these fans is there is a little bit of latency when picking up from various activities. It's not hugely noticeable, but if you're looking out for it, you are going to. In my very tight, compact environment, I don't think a central channel is going to make any difference at all. But if you have the space and you wanted that channel, the Arduino Uno would not be a good fit. It can only drive two PWM fans, and it's quite big and clunky in general anyway. One thing you might have noticed in this project is the absence of me mounting it into a case. And that is because I ran out of cases and I had to kind of fudge it to get it in place. But it should just be a simple case of drilling out the spaces that you need for your fan headers and routing those through the case. Having a wind simulator in my cupboard has made the cupboard bearable in 30 degree Celsius heat, about 86 Fahrenheit. But whilst it's still not a comfortable experience racing in summer in a cupboard in VR, it's at least bearable for the moments that I have to do it. A great little immersion project then, it's not gonna help with your consistency in the car, but it will help you to feel how fast you're going down those straights. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the experience. I've got a little diagram to show you how to build the circuit, which I'll pop in the description, so look out for that. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe to my channel to see more of this kind of thing. And until next time, guys, bye-bye for now. Stay cool.